For most people, the Eredivisie is a league that they occasionally sign the next upcoming superstar from and don't give too much attention. In today's video, I'm telling you exactly why the Eredivisie is actually one of the most underrated and fun leagues on FIFA and how you can enjoy your saves with any team in this league. Of course, the league is not just Ajax, Feyenoord and PSV, there are actually another good 15 clubs you can pick in the Eredivisie. While the league might not have all the faces, all the stadiums or a second division like leagues like the Premier League, everything else is fully licensed and can be used as a super fun backdrop to any FIFA career mode save. If you've got any suggestions for other leagues you think I should cover, please let me know in the comments, on Discord or on my Twitter at JogRafifa. Before we can talk about the present and future, let's have a quick look at some of the history of football in the Netherlands. The Eredivisie was founded in 1956, so it's one of the youngest major professional football leagues in Europe. The league currently consists of 18 teams, with the winner being crowned Dutch national champion. Ajax are of course the most successful Dutch club in European competitions, and they've won the European Cup on four occasions. The last thing I think you need to know is that over the past two decades, the Eredivisie has seen an increased movement of players to other European leagues, with many top Dutch players moving abroad to play for foreign clubs. This wasn't always the case during the 60s to the 90s, a lot of the better Dutch players stayed in the Netherlands, so it could be fairly realistic if you want to keep some of your higher rated players. The league has some pretty interesting strengths and weaknesses as well, with some of the strengths including their previous success in Europe, of course Ajax, PSV and Feyenoord have all been fairly successful playing in continental competitions. They also have a lot of historic teams with real life views on how the game should be played. This could be something like Ajax and their youth academy only focus, it could be some of the other teams really like playing long ball and some of them are really adamant that they want to play a short passing possession game. Have a look at the team you want to pick and see if you can find out how that team likes to play football. Another strength is that they have a major national team that can win competitions from day one. They did okay at this year's World Cup, but if you can manage to take over the Dutch national team as well as a team in this league, you should be set to be able to win both the Eredivisie and the World Cup in 2026. The league isn't all positives though, it does have some weaknesses. Compared to some of the other major leagues in Europe like the Bundesliga, the Spanish First Division or the Premier League, of course the Eredivisie does have a pretty poor financial state. A couple of the teams will have about 20 to 30 million pounds you can spend in the first season, but a lot of the teams towards the bottom of the league you'll be struggling to even reach 10 million, which in the Premier League you get teams like Nottingham Forest with 60 to 70 million in the budget. There's also a huge gap in talent between 1st and 18th in the league. Ajax have the best squad by far, but some of these teams that are expected to finish down the bottom have really bad rated players like 61 to 65 in their starting 11. This could be seen as a positive if you do like a really hard challenge, but it can make playing as one of the better teams in the league a little bit stale as you are constantly destroying some of these worst teams. The final weakness is that it has a lack of real faces and stadiums compared to some of the bigger leagues as well. Only Ajax and PSV actually have their real life stadiums in the game, although a couple of the default stadiums do look quite similar to other teams in Holland, so you could possibly get away with that if you manage to assign 18 different stadiums to every single team in the league. You can also kind of get around the real face problem as well because there are a lot of Dutch players who have played in the Bundesliga or in the Premier League, so if you re-sign them, bring them back to Holland, you could probably just about make a full squad of Dutch real face players at any level. I think the most unique part of playing in the Netherlands is that it's such a high potential league. In fact, it's got the third highest average potential after the Spanish First Division and the English First Division, making it the third highest average potential league on FIFA. With the average player having just under 80 potential, there's a massive amount for every single player to grow. Not that many players are actually over 80 potential to start off with, so you can expect the Dutch league to get better and better every single season you put into your FIFA save. If you're interested in keeping things a bit more realistic and a bit more difficult, why not follow the real life squad rules? So it's super easy to follow these in fact, the unlimited players in the squad means you can have as many as FIFA lets you have. The only other restriction is that non-EU players under the age of 18 aren't allowed to play in the games and any non-EU players must be paid at least €4,000 a week or £3,700 a week. Super easy to follow and this will probably be the case for everyone except a couple of youth players who you'll have to loan out to other countries if you want to give them game time. Speaking of youth players, 
This is actually one of the most interesting parts of playing in the Netherlands. Of course, a lot of the teams in this league are known for their youth academies, but where exactly should you be scouting? Of course, the most obvious choice is scouting in Netherlands, and I would say every single club in the league should be sending at least one scout to Netherlands. So you've also got Belgium, who are a super popular nation, with 25 Belgians playing in the Netherlands at the minute. Check the location of your team on a map. If you're playing as a team like PSV, who are right near the Belgian border, they would be a realistic choice to send a scout to Belgium. Similar can be said for Fortuna Sittard and RKC. Germany is the second most common nationality in the league, with NEC, Vitesse, FC20 and Emmen all being close to the German border, so consider scouting there if you pick one of these four teams. Next up is the entire area of Scandinavia. Lots of Scandinavians moved to Holland, in fact the proto-Vikings were actually one of the main settlers in the era, almost 1,500 years ago. This means there's partially a shared culture between Swedish, Norwegian, Danish and Dutch people, so a lot of footballers from these nations do head to the Netherlands before moving to bigger leagues. You can see this with there being 14 Swedes in the league at the minute, 13 Norwegians and 6 Danish people playing in the Eredivisie. Next up you can also scout Morocco, because 16% of male youths under 25 in Amsterdam actually count themselves as Dutch Moroccan, so basically any club in a major city in the Netherlands can look to scout Morocco. And similar can be said for Turkey as well, there's a lot of young Turkish men in the Netherlands, so this could be an interesting place to scout if you like having a realistic demographic in your youth academy. You can piece these bits of information together, so if you're playing as a team that's not near a border, you should probably go for Netherlands, maybe go for Sweden and Morocco. If you're playing as a big city team, maybe go for Morocco, Netherlands and Belgium if you're playing as PSV. So there's a lot of different ways you can put this together, and whichever way you decide, you're probably going to have a fairly realistic setup when it comes to your youth academy. So, if you want to try and keep things a little bit more difficult, I would try and limit my player ratings to one of these different values depending on where you think your team is at. If you're one of the worst teams in the league, you should probably sell your players once they reach 76 overall. A lot of the other teams in the league, or maybe even teams from the second division in England or in Germany would be interested in players if you're one of the worst teams in the league and you've got a guy at this rating. If you're mid-table, so a little bit further up the division, I would say probably go to 78 before you sell your players. If you're managing to get into the Europa League, go for 81. And if you're getting far in the Champions League, like the likes of Ajax, PSV and Feyenoord do, then I would probably try and keep a player until they're 84 and then sell them at that point. I think that's a fairly realistic value. You've seen players like Frankie de Jong and Matisse de Ligt. Both players were about 84 rated when they got picked up by Juventus and Barcelona. So you don't want to try and be overpowered, it does make the game a little bit less fun and a little bit less interesting. And hopefully, if you can combine all of what I've said today, you'll have a very interesting save in the Dutch First Division. It's a league I really enjoy playing in, and hopefully you will too. It's focused all about Youth Academy, it's focused on high potential players, and that's two of the most fun parts of playing FIFA Career Mode. If you do decide to do a Dutch career mode, let me know who you pick in the comments. If you want me to do a different league or you think there's a more interesting league for this kind of thing than the Dutch First Division as well, please do let me know in the comments. Make sure you join the Discord if you're interested in that kind of thing. Follow me on Twitter if you want to hear my random thoughts on football. But thank you all for watching. I'll see you soon. Cheers and goodbye.